Hi there, Paul here from the House of the Outsiders and thank you for dropping by. Uh, today I'm working in my small A5 Dilutions journal. Haven't picked it up for a while so I um, thought I'd drag it out and start um, playing in it after... <laughs> do something with paper after last week's sort of like trial with burlap. Because I thought, well, paper's a lot easier to work with. <laughs> I'll give myself a bit of a break. And I also wanted to try using um, this kind of uh, blended technique with Paparazzi's fresco chalk paints. So what I've done is I've taken uh, two colours, uh, I think it's Bougainvillea and Moonlight, and I've blended them together. Now I'm showing you this colour that I did a few weeks ago um, because what I'm going to use over my background is this drawing that I did from that said collage. So the plan of doing those collages in order to help um, see if I could uh, <laughs> create a few new characters from them. Well, um, I thought I'd give it a go. So it wasn't my original plan, but I sat there with my painted page and thought, right, I now need to add something to it. I thought, well, why don't I use one of my collage figures? So I made that page and then filming paused for about uh, half a day whilst I drew my little character, digitised him, um, put him on computer and then printed him out as you can see there. So, so yes, anyway, back to the journal. I did a background where, uh, as I said, I blended it because I've was i been thinking about doing something a bit more with my background. So I figured if I did kind of a blended background, it would have something for my characters to sit on, you know, give it something that looks like a landscape. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd experiment with that for a while. Uh, so, whilst that's now drying, I have, as I say, gone ahead with my figure, printed it out, and now brought out some watercolours. These are my Primo Classic collections. And I'm giving it a first coat of colour. Now, I uh, think the original colour that you saw gave it that kind of headdress was in a rainbow colour, so I wanted to stick to that. I like the rainbow idea. I mean, I'm sure I can do other ideas now that I've got it drawn out in black and white. You know, I don't have to fit it the rainbow, but... Um, yeah, you know, I, mean, I like my bright colours and <laughs> any excuse to put a rainbow in. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. I'm painting kind of alternate, because alternate colours, so instead of going red, orange, yellow, for instance, because whilst the red is wet, if I start painting the orange, then the orange and red, because it's watercolours and wet, they might bleed into each other. So um, I kept skipping one over. So I did the red, then I did the yellow, um, and then the blue, and then sort of like when those were dry, I could paint the colours in between. So that's why I painted that in, in, in sort of like a weird order. Now I wanted to add a slight shadow. Um, so I thought the easiest way to start would be with the kind of green coat, so I did it with a Posca pen and then the the strange semicircle underneath the character. Um, I gave that with a bit of Posca pen, although I did it in such a light colour you can hardly see. So once that's all dried, I keep saying so an awful lot, I do apologise. If you hear me say so again, you can use it as a drinking game. <laughs> um, but what I did was took my pen and I have decided to, because I vectorised it, it's a nice clean shape, the way um, to try and make it look a little more organic, a little bit more hand-drawn, is to add some lines and squiggles on the inside. So I just drew a few lines around the coat, lines around the face, just inside the lines, uh, just scribbled with a thin pen. And then you see for the semicircle underneath in the original collage, I mean, that was taken from a glitter ball. So uh, I'm afraid I just went back to that kind of idea and drew the lines in to give it the uh, a half a glitter ball effect. And then I've gone over giving it shade lines and then I've added some doodles to the headdress, some doodles around the eyes. And yeah, once I started doodling, couldn't stop, so I <laughs> started adding it to the um, dress. I mean, this was, when I t 
termed my little critters doodle monsters. The original idea I had when I drew them was to make something that was nice and simple, uh, simple shapes on the inside, nice and clean, so that I had plenty of room to start drawing and doodling on the inside, hence why I called them doodle monsters. But I'd never really got as far as sort of like doodling. So um, I suppose this is kind of the, my first, the first time I've actually used these kind of sort of like designs of mine in the way that I originally anticipated. Um, so I finished doodling it, I kind of covered it in black pen and white pen and cut it out and there's a little bit of little decoration around to kind of give it that fan effect that I had to chip away little triangles around the outside. But once I cut it out I still felt that those doodles within the dress coat thing, whatever, um, needed a little bit more. So I blacked in some of those kind of borders that I put in. Okay, then I thought it was finished, so glued it onto my now dry page. And this is the reason um, I went for the small A5. For the paper reason, rather than having to work on fabric, but also because it's a small page, it meant um, I didn't have to, I didn't have a long time to wait for paints to dry so I could do that ombre effect, that kind of blended effect on such a smaller page. Okay, if I've got to get used to the technique then I could work up to a bigger page but I thought yeah I'll stick to just doing it on small scale whilst I'm playing. So as you can see it kind of gives it like a landscape effect as if I've set the character in the foreground and to I've given it a shadow to sort of like also base it into the picture. And what I've tried to do, I've got an awful lot of space and I'm not one for crowding things at the moment, you never know, styles evolve. I added one little background feature, <laughs> for want of a better word, to give it more of a scene. So I kind of doodled a, a, a tree with some basic shapes, you know, some circles and things. And I thought, well, OK, that kind of sets the scene. It's not just my monster, it makes it look like... It's set in a scene. Um, I gave it a very simple border with a black pen and then I got a white and added some dashes and then I carried on doodling and decided I'd want a thinner line around the outside. So basically I feel like the design side, natural visual elements are all done. So the final stage, as always with me, is to add some I was going to say the word journaling, but I don't journal. <laughs> if you follow my uh, work for a while, you know that basically um, I just add quotes, quotes that I find that um, out of context sound odd. <laughs> so um, I think I picked up a, it's a book I'm reading at the moment and I've got a couple of quotes from it and I was really stuck. So I was, I just, randomly flicked to a page and, uh, and I was l also looking for a phrase that didn't have too many words in it because I didn't have an awful lot of space and I think the characters in there turned around and sort of like said shall we get some drinks and I thought yeah if you just read that out of context it has the data strangeness that I like for my journals as I said I don't use my journals for spilling out emotions it's not for me it might be for others oh and before i speak any further please ignore even though i'm pointing out please ignore the s on drinks it went miraculously wrong <laughs> horrendously wrong not miraculously horrendously wrong um so please ignore anyway we've got some close-ups which means we're close to the end of the video so i better shut up so thank you for watching and i'll speak to you soon bye for now